In this video, we're going to show you how to install a set of ape hangers on a 2018 soft tail. Hey folks, I'm Robert with Hill Country Custom Cycles and we're back. We've got a 2018 soft tail here that we've been getting a lot of phone calls on by the way and uh, we're going to show you how to put some ape hangers on here. And First off, I got to tell you, you know, it, it, it may seem intimidating, but man, this bike is super easy to do. And uh, we're going to show you how it's done, you know, as we always do. But just trust me on this. This thing's a piece of cake. Uh, it's not going to take too long. And uh, we're going to show you how to knock it out. So follow us along. All right, so we've got the, the bike secured you know, jack underneath it, whatever, to stabilize it. Tank cover's on. You know, we're gonna take this off here in a few minutes to pull the tank off, but better safe than sorry. So we've got that on there. Don't wanna drop any tools. Fender cover's on. We're gonna go ahead and take the seat off, disconnect the battery, get that out of the way. That way all of our boxes are checked for safety. And then uh, we'll get into the meat of the install. Notice this right here fits onto that right there. And this is the negative battery cable, which is a 10 millimeter. Just move the cable away, make sure it's not gonna touch the battery. So next step, we're gonna get the gas tank off. We've gotta get the dash off and unplug that. And then there's some connections over here. We've gotta disconnect for the gas tank. I'm gonna pull the bolts and pull it right out. This connector right under here. And then just gonna get it up. You wanna be sure and watch for uh, fuel pressure spray to come out of there. So we're gonna just take these uh, 9 16 bolts out first, right? But we're gonna pull the back one out and leave the front one in and pivot this gas tank up so that we can get to the connections underneath. It's super easy and actually really cool. So watch this. We have our fuel line vent connection and then we have our fuel gauge connection right here. Just push a little tab down and pull it right out. So pull those off, get that out, front tank bolt, tank comes right off. You need to have a nice safe place for your gas tank to sit before you take it off. It's also a good idea not to have your tank completely full of gas like this one is when you go to take it off. Okay, so the next step, we wanna get the bars off and get the new bars mounted. We've gotta disconnect the wiring over here. We're gonna remove the clutch cable or at least take it off of the perch so it's free from the handlebars. And then we're gonna remove the brake master cylinder and leave the line connected because we don't want fluid getting everywhere until we change it. So we'll pull those parts off, get the bars off and get the new bars mounted. There's all of our connectors right there. There we go. So we've got, and this is important, this connector is the throttle sensor. These two. Actually, this is throttle sensor. This is also a throttle sensor, but this is uh, for heated grips. So if you don't have heated grips, this just goes back in there, not connected to anything. You've got these connectors here, which uh, that's the, the right hand turn signal and the right hand uh, control switches. Then on the lower side, left, left for lower, right is on top, you've got left turn signals, left hand switches. So we're gonna disconnect all those. Throttle sensor, what we're trying to push on is this right here. OK. 
Okay. Right hand. So pushing that down. And then it's on the opposite side here. There we go. Alright, now we're all disconnected. We gotta pull these clamps off. that up. Okay, so now we got the bars off, obviously. New handlebars, yeah, awesome ones by the way. Inch and a half, 18 inch tall hellbents and gloss black. Um, these are made specifically for this particular model, the Sport Glide, which has the inch and a quarter risers, much like the Fat Boy and the Wide Glide. So the center section is an inch and a quarter tube. We also make it in one inch for the other models that have the, the inch diameter riser. This is our pre-wired kit, so it's uh, completely Plug and play, you've got all your connectors here that plug right into the factory harness just like you saw us take off. We have a couple options, factory switches and housings is what we use, but the big thing is turn signals. A lot of people take these off and leave them off, uh, or they relocate them to the forks, you know, the front of the bike, which you can do with the factory harness and everything that's on the bike already. Or, in this case, the guy wanted to keep it up on the handlebars in the factory location, so that kind of forces us to have turn signals and make a harness and put the connectors on and all that stuff, which is what we did here. You know, you are welcome to send us your stuff and we'd be happy to do that, but it's obviously gonna increase some downtime. So in this case, we wired it all up. These things are ready to go and uh, we've got the connectors on and we're in good shape. The other components of the kit, we've got the polyurethane riser bushings. This bike is brand new, so we're not gonna change them, but anything over two years old, probably want to do these little bad boys you know they're going to keep the handlebars from moving in the risers and stiffen that up for you not to mention the OEM ones are made out of rubber and they tend to dry rod and, and do some different things over time the transmission gasket for changing the clutch cable which there's this neat little wrench you can get and uh, you know this is basically a short wrench so that we can get in there to take the cover off without removing our exhaust. Front brake line, this is for ABS models. You know, we have it for non-ABS as well. It's the upper brake line, banjo washers, brake fluid. Clutch cable in the correct length with the boot and the, the little chalk piece, as everybody calls it. And that's really about it outside of the tools and labor to do it. So this is our pre-wired kit, you know, complete with everything that you need. It's on our website. If you have any questions, just give us a call or send us an email. Now we're going to mount the bars, get the wiring through, attach the wiring and get that button back up. And then uh, more importantly, we're going to go back and take the cables that we have and make sure that they're the right length before we install them. Because if they're not, we need to exchange them. And if they are, rock on, let's go.
This is what we've got. Five connectors basically, well six, but five harnesses. Right here is our throttle sensor, throttle control. This is the connector for the sensor that goes on top. This extra one, as I explained earlier, is for heated grips. If you don't have heated grips, that just stays the way it is. Don't worry about it. Then we've got our handlebar control wiring, which left is on bottom. And how you know this is the other side has two connectors, which go up here at the top, which is right. And then we have our turn signals, which look exactly the same. And we've been kind enough to mark the left side for you. So this one goes on bottom. And then this one obviously goes on top because it's right. There you go. The wiring was done in less than 30 seconds. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, next step. We want to check the length of our lines. We need to make sure that these lines are the right lengths. 99% of the time they are. Every now and then they're not for whatever reason it's out of our control. So we want to kind of put them in place, hold them up there, make sure they look right without installing them. That way we can exchange them. If the lines have been installed, unfortunately they can't be exchanged because they're not considered new at that point. Looks pretty good. Slide that out of the way for now. Okay, so now it's time to change the clutch cable. You know, we've already made sure that our clutch cable is the right length, obviously, and we got to get it out of this side cover here. Not that big a deal. Break it loose. This cover here has bolts that are further down, and a lot of times the exhaust is kind of in the way of those bolts. So, Allen wrench that's short can get in there and do it, and we can likely get them out with this. If for whatever reason we can't, rather than take the whole exhaust off, which is a pain in the neck, we're just gonna loosen up, you know, at the head over here and then any points where it might attach, which in this case is back here, we'll take these bolts out to where we can pull the exhaust over an inch or so to get our wrench in there. Rather than removing the whole exhaust, which is a real big pain, especially when you go to put it back on. So huge time saver. If you cannot have to mess with the exhaust and just one of these, it's gonna save you at least 30, 45 minutes. You wanna go ahead and break loose your transmission cable because when the cover's out and loose, it's kinda of hard to, to get that broke loose. You can't read the labels because I've screwed them up, but the labels basically say that these threads should not be torqued any tighter than three foot pounds. This one says these are Teflon coated on the inside and should be lubed prior to installation. Be careful not to cross thread these. It is very easy to do. It should turn on just ever so easy, hand tight like that until you get to the O-ring and then you just want to snug it. Don't have to put a hammer or a monkey wrench on it. Just make it snug. There we go, right there. And I will actually finish tightening that up after I put this together. I don't know if you were watching earlier, but my balls fell out when I pulled my, uh, you know, little thingy off there, right? So in order to put my balls back in, I got to put something there to keep them in there. So we're going to use a little bit of grease right here, stick it in there, that'll hold our balls in place while we get that thingy back on and uh, we'll be in good shape. back on there like so Just like that flip it over and then bam 
for those of you that haven't seen this before, you know, the clutch is pretty basic. You know, when you, when you pull the cable, that ball and ramp assembly just moves this piece out. Can you see how that moves in and out? So it's going up and down like this, right? When it does that, it pushes on this push rod right here, which goes to the other side of the transmission in the primary, and that's what pushes your clutch plates apart and disengages the clutch. So the reason I'm telling you this is because every now and then we get the phone call and their clutch isn't working, they can't adjust it all out and whatever. And what happens is they put this transmission side, uh, side door on with the clutch cable pulled out like that and it gets stuck there and it won't retract because it's too far out. So before you put this back on, make sure that you're rotated all the way clockwise or the most length of cable sticking out of there. You don't want it there. You do want it like that before you put it back on. Get you a new gasket, put it back on the same way it came off, you're done. Put a new O-ring on your drain plug. Just like so. Get it mounted on kind of loose. We're gonna put that in there like so. Tighten that up, Just snug, slide our boot down. So now that the clutch is all adjusted out, we're gonna do the transmission fluid. There we go. And we are doing this to minimize brake fluid spillage. Everything loose. So I can work it all back over to the edge where it's supposed to be. Tighten washers until they crush. There we go. Okay, so we've got the brake line installed, but I want to explain a couple things to you that's different. Uh, I did it in that sequence to minimize brake fluid loss. You know, I don't want brake fluid going everywhere when I'm taking it apart or putting it back together. So I took it apart in that order to keep brake fluid in the lines and in the master cylinder and keep the system as closed as possible. So you might have to rewind and, and double check that order. But the most important thing here is this line coming out right here. You can't get it too far up because when you turn, this is gonna hit the frame. And this isn't something that we did. This is by Harley's design. Our, our line is exactly like Harley's. If you look on the frame, there's a black sticker here or clear that goes over the frame so that when you turn, this rubs here and rubs that piece of uh, you know film or whatever they put over it so it doesn't scratch the frame. You'll also notice this block here rotates on the bolt that it's on so that it can move and flex whenever you turn the handlebars to the right. So you gotta pay attention to this because you don't wanna have any issues with your brake line being in the wrong spot and all that stuff. But works out real clean, factory location, looks good. 
Now we're gonna go into bleeding it and show you how super easy that is. And uh, we'll be done with the brakes. Careful not to spill any fluid when you do this. Ooh, we're right there. All air is out of the hose. Crack the valve. So we just took it off the factory controls using a T27, but on our stuff, we like to use stainless hardware. So in these particular bolts, it is a 532 Allen. Take those bad boys out right there. So it goes on just like so. that on first and line those two little bad boys up okay so there you have it man ape hangers 101 2018 soft tail uh, inch and a half hell bents right here in a nice comfortable position you know um, and i know this question is going to come up how tall are the bars how tall are you so on and so forth you know 18 inch bars i'm five foot eleven uh, i always tell people that anything right at shoulder height is your most comfortable position because that keeps your back straight your neck straight and your head forward and reducing that fatigue on long rides where you're hunched over or, you know riding just uncomfortably so this really is where you want to be, and don't be afraid to go to taller handlebars thinking that you're going to look stupid, you know. Get it to where you feel comfortable so you can ride your bike and enjoy it, and I promise you'll thank me for it. All right, folks, thanks for watching. We really appreciate all your views and your comments. It's wonderful. I hope we've been able to help you. If you want to see some more videos, click on some of these over here to the right. If you want to subscribe and see what's coming up new, click on that button down there, and we'll hook you up. Thanks again. Have a good day.